So let's welcome in our college basketball expert, Matt Norlander. And Matt, you and I were watching the end of that game unfold together. You see Caleb Love go up and you put your faith in him if you're an Arizona fan, but unfortunately it rims out. Just your thoughts on that exciting double overtime win for FAU. Uh, we don't have enough time for me to get all my thoughts here because that really may have been the best game of this season so far. We're, uh, we're almost two months into the college hoop season and a double overtime affair that I will uh, remind our viewers. Uh, it took Dusty May and FAU a long time to get Arizona to be convinced to play this game because Tommy Lloyd scheduled so ambitiously in the non-conference. There was a point this past offseason where they had a tentative agreement. Arizona backed away, then they came back to the table and they finally got it done. And thank goodness that Arizona agreed to play this game. Yes, it's a loss, but what a huge win. A loss for Arizona, a huge win for, for college basketball to get arguably the game of the season. On the losing side with Arizona, just its second loss of the season, both are highly respectable. Purdue on a neutral a week ago, and now FAU, which is going to almost certainly be a top 10 team when the polls refresh on Monday. Those are two high-level quality quad one losses. And Arizona will have plenty of other opportunities in league play. It's already done so much damage in in, uh, in non-league play here. Caleb Love not hitting the shot. Um, you know, he does, you know, the old Ted Lasso saying, uh, be a goldfish, forget what just happened. Caleb Love is the embodiment of that at, in college basketball. He couldn't get this long three to go down. Kylan Boswell is actually the most reliable three-point shooter. But he's a point guard. He's looking to distribute. Clearly, Tommy Lloyd wanted Love taking that shot. It did not fall. You see the numbers here. You see the splits here. Let's get to FAU. Uh, in the context of the game first, and then their resume. In the game, the shot making was absurd. Janelle Davis had probably the best game of his career right now in, in, in doing this and hitting a couple of just huge, huge shots, going for 35 points, nine rebounds, three assists. Oh, by the way, he played down the stretch in regulation and overtime with foul trouble, still hit some big ones. Elijah Martin hit a huge three-pointer. And for FAU, the shot making down the stretch in overtime, uh, and, and then in double OT. And if you watch the whole game, Arizona was a big early 14 point lead. It looked like it was going to run away early. But credit to Dusty May and his players for getting this done, for having that composure and doing it without Vlad Golden, who fouled out early in the first overtime. He's their most important big. And then quickly on the resume, Haley, FAU had had some nice wins to this point. It was a bona fide top 15 team. This is clearly far and away its best win of the season. I think by the time we get to Selection Sunday, when we look across it, maybe the 10 best wins of any team, I think FAU beating Arizona will register as one of the 10 best wins on any resume in the sport. Uh, a huge seed line bump for the Owls as they prepare for the American Athletic Conference slate. Just a major, major victory. First time ever, FAU beats a top 10 team in program history. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. We talked about the beginning of this one, just how monumental the win would be for FAU. And now they get it. You mentioned uh, John L. What a game he had. It's so fun. It felt like March. But now we kind of have the Ted Lasso mentality as well, right, where we move ahead to what's to come for both of these teams. So talk to us about how this result will affect both of these teams going forward. Sure, absolutely. So for FAU, now it's it's taken on a very, very challenging non-conference schedule, has beaten the likes of Texas A&M, Virginia Tech, Butler's got a good record, uh, Liberty and Charleston proud, been major programs, uh, but then clearly the Arizona win. Now it's going to get Florida Gulf Coast, and by the way, on the road, so it still has one more non-league game in a road environment, trying to avoid a letdown there, and then it's going to play, you know, Memphis is going to share uh, American Athletic Conference space with Memphis, and it will have plenty of opportunities here to continue to bolster the resume. Will FAU take another loss or two or three before March. I, I think that's possible. It's a tougher league and they've got more of a target on their back, but they play so connected. For Arizona, you see the schedule upcoming. At Cal, should be a win. At Stanford, should be a win. But don't you open up league play with two roadies. Colorado might be the second best team in the Pac-12. Keep an eye on that. And you've got Washington State at the bottom there. We'll see how Tommy Lloyd's team responds. I have no real big concerns down the road with Arizona. I still think this is one of the five best teams in the country. It just happened to lose an amazing game on a neutral floor, uh, quasi-neutral floor. That was an Arizona pro crowd that was in that building there. Uh, but Tommy Lloyd's an excellent coach. He, uh, he still is one. He's like 14 and six all time against top 25 teams since he got to Arizona. So they'll be okay. Just a little bit here, a little bit there to, uh, to work on. But after the way that Arizona scheduled in the non-conference to, uh, to get out of there with a nine and two record is highly impressive. Those are two teams, Haley, that are absolutely capable of making it to the national title game, not predicting it will happen, but in a group of, you know, 10 to 12 teams that I would consider viable candidates, the Arizona Wildcats and FAU 
uh, owls are absolutely final four material in 2024. Yeah, and what a Christmas treat that we get this game on the Saturday before Christmas. Hopefully going forward, this is what we can expect out of some of these games in the near future. Matt Norlander with all of the insight. We appreciate the time, Matt. Of course, you can catch him on his podcast with Gary Parrish, the eye on college basketball by scanning that QR code on your screen. I can't wait to tap in and listen to their reaction on the podcast to this incredible game. Like I said, scan that QR code or you can listen in wherever you get your podcasts.